Hi there, I'm going to show you how to calculate the area of a regular hexagon. Remember, regular means that all of its sides have the same length. So in this picture, we've got a regular hexagon. Hexagon has six sides, remember? And all six sides of this regular hexagon have the same length, just a generic length that we're going to call S. And we'll look at a couple specific examples in a couple minutes. Now, let's cut straight to the chase. I'll show you what the formula is. We'll do a couple examples and then hang out for a couple minutes and I'll show you a little bit about where the formula comes from. The area of a regular hexagon, of course, is all of this space inside of it. And inside that space, I have conveniently written the formula to calculate the area. So what is the area of a hexagon whose side lengths are all s? It's just 3 halves times the square root of 3 times s squared. That's it. That's the formula. Get a regular hexagon with side length s, plug it into this formula. That's your area. So let's do a specific example. Let's say our regular hexagon has sides that are 2 inches long. So then what is the area of the hexagon? We just have to plug our side length, 2 inches, into the regular hexagon area formula. So that's just 3 root 3 over 2 and then multiply by the side length squared. The side length is 2 inches, so we multiply by side length squared. And what's this equal to? Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Well, we've just got 3 root 3 over 2. Remember, it's the side length that's squared. The 3 root 3 over 2, that is not squared. So then what is 2 inches squared? Well, you've got to remember to square the 2, which gives us 4, and then we also have to square the inches to give us our proper area units, inches squared. Now, can we simplify this at all? Yes, we can. You've got to remember that fractions mean division. 3 root 3 over 2, that means divide by 2. And division is the same as multiplication, right? This is the same as 1 half times 3 root 3 times 4 inches squared. And we can do multiplication in whatever order we please. Point is, we can take 1 half of 4, and that's going to simplify this a little bit. Now, 1 half of 4 is just 2, so we would be left with 2 times 3 root 3, but 2 times 3 is just 6, so that's actually 6 root 3. Remember, multiplication is commutative, that's why I've been able to swap the order of these things around with no trouble. So we've just got 6 root 3, and then don't forget our units, inches squared. That is the area of our regular hexagon, and that's how easy it is to use the formula. And if you prefer approximations, this is about 10.39 square inches. If you weren't aware, square root of 3 is about 1.73. So if you don't have a square root button, you could use that. But really, if you don't have a square root button, uh, what you need is a new calculator. So that's how you calculate the area of a regular hexagon. Let's do one more example. Let's suppose we've got a regular hexagon with sides of length 5. What are the units? Well, the units really don't matter because we're calculating area. The units of area are something like length squared. So if your side lengths are in miles, the area is going to be miles squared. If the side length is in meters, the area is going to be meters squared. We really don't have to worry about the units. We know what our final units are going to be. It's just going to be the lengths unit squared. So let's just ignore units and carry on with the calculation. What's the area of the regular hexagon? It's 3 root 3 over 2, 3 root 3 over 2, times the side length squared. In this case, the side lengths are 5, so we need to multiply by 5 squared. You may know that 5 squared is just 25, so I'm going to write it like that. Now, 25 isn't even, so we're not going to be able to divide it by 2 nicely like we did before. I mean, we could if we want and just use a decimal, but personally, I like to keep things in nice, cute-looking fractions. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this as what? 
Well, I'm just going to do 3 times 25. So I'm bringing the 25 into the fraction, and that's going to make this 75 root 3 over 2. Let me rewrite that fraction bar. 75 root 3 over 2, because we had 25 times 3 root 3 over 2. Now, if you like decimals, this is equal to 37. 0.5 root 3. That's just doing 75 divided by 2. And then if you want an approximation, this is approximately 65. And you might just call it 65 units squared. Whatever the units happen to be, area is a square unit, so we'll write it like that. That's all there is to it. That's how you find the area of a regular hexagon. Now let's take a minute to see where this formula comes from, which really is the more interesting part. Here is our regular hexagon, and regular polygons like this have this cool property that we can draw a circle that circumscribes, that's what they call it, it circumscribes the polygon. That means this circle passes through every vertex of the regular hexagon. This is just a thing you can do with regular polygons that's pretty cool. Now what I want you to imagine is that we've got this, what's called a circumcircle, passing through all vertices of the regular hexagon. Imagine we draw the center of the circle. And of course, there are radiuses that go from the center to the circle. I know the plural of radius is radii, but now you know that too. I'm going to say radii. Radii. There are all sorts of radii of this circle going from the center to the circle. But let's draw the radii that go from the center two vertices of the hexagon. I'm going to go ahead and draw those. This is what it looks like if we draw the radii from the center of the circle to the vertices of the hexagon. And you might notice this splits the hexagon into six triangles. Now these triangles happen to all be congruent and regular, which means all of these triangles have side lengths that are all the same. We won't prove that in this video, we'll prove it in a different video, and I'll leave a link to that in the description. Definitely a really cool result that we can split a regular hexagon into six regular triangles. Now, if these triangles are all regular and congruent, like I said, that means all their sides have the same length, but what is that length? Well, notice that each triangle has a side of the hexagon as one of its sides, which means the sides of the triangles all have to have a length of s, just like the regular hexagon does. Now, it's pretty easy to calculate the area of a regular triangle, and it's from that formula that we get the area of a regular hexagon. Right here is the area of a regular triangle of side length s. It's root 3 over 4 times s squared. So how do we take that and turn it into the area of our hexagon? Well, our hexagon just has six of these triangles. The six regular triangles make up the entire hexagon. So we just have to take the area of one of these triangles which is given by this expression here, and multiply it by 6. That gives us our area for a regular hexagon. It's 6 times root 3 over 4s squared, and 6 over 4, that's the same as 3 over 2, giving way to the final formula that we've been using throughout this video. That's 3 root 3 over 2s squared. And I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson where we prove this area formula for regular triangles. So that's where the formula for the area of a regular hexagon comes from. If you really want to have your curiosity fulfilled right now, here's a quick outline of the proof showing where the area of a regular triangle comes from.
we just draw an angle bisector H through one vertex of the triangle, and then by side angle side, we've split it up into two congruent triangles, which thus means that these two angles are right angles, and these two sides are congruent, and then it just amounts to Pythagorean theorem and applying the familiar one-half base times height formula for the area of a triangle. So that's it. That's how we calculate the area of a regular hexagon and some details about where it comes from. Hope this lesson was helpful, and let me know if you have any questions down in the comments.